set that up. Oops. Okay. okay, it looks like we're streaming live. So I'm going to start. Hopefully we get some more folks coming in. Um, thanks, to, thanks everybody for coming. Uh, sorry, we're having such a slow, low turnout, but at least it'll be recorded and um, available for folks on, uh, on, on the Zoom, on the PTA uh, YouTube page, and also it's on Facebook Live. So uh, probably lesson learned is I probably should get the link out to folks earlier next time. I thought I was doing it on Tuesday mornings before, but it seems like this one didn't work very well. So, um, well, we can do the roll call, which is what we usually do, but there's not too many of us here, but I'll start. I'm Steve Van Tassel, PTA president. I think you all know me. I don't know all of you. Uh, I've got one son, Shane, who's upstairs sick, but he's hopefully be better by Thursday so he can go to school. Uh, and so let's see. Um, I mean, one uh, next on the list was was George. So go ahead, George. George Newberry, the PTA treasurer. Two children, Chester and Harry, in second and kindergarten, and they're all staying at home. So it's same. It's same as usual here. Hey, Sierra. Sierra, PTA tread, uh, why do I always do that? Uh, PTA secretary and two kids, Evelyn, who is in first grade, Logan, who's in preschool and happy to report that when Evelyn went back for Thursday, Friday, I also enrolled Logan back into preschool. So he's going back on similar days as well. Great, <laughs> good, that's great. Uh, next we have Mr. Swagger. Hi everyone, I'm Jim Swagger. I'm the proud principal at Groveton Elementary who is very happy to report that we have all grades back in the building as of today. And today was a wonderful day. It was fantastic to see everyone. Well, that's that's great news. I'm ha happy and, and Thursday, you'll see a whole crop of new kids. The re Basically, I guess the rest, everybody will finally be back by Thursday on Thursday. So that's good news, so. Okay, uh, and then we have Anna Bennett. Hi, uh, I'm Anna Bennett and uh, I have three daughters at Groveton right now. One is in uh, fifth grade, one's fourth grade and one is second grade. So they all went back today. So yeah, it's nice to have them out of the house. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's good. So, um, well, I know we have a small group but we still probably should do the, the, meet, the meeting minutes and the treasurer's report. So. Uh, let me get the let me get that up. Um, do you want me to share, or do you? You can share, Sierra, if you want. I mean, I was just going to share the the slides for the meet the meeting um, that I just put put up. Sorry, okay. I created it. Never. Okay, so so here we go. So we today is the March sixteenth meeting. Uh, we did the roll call already, and then we'll do the approval of the February meeting minutes, then the monthly treasurer's report, the president's report, and then about 7.20, we've got the summer camps coming to start doing, doing their presentations, and I guess we can scotch the free coupon, pizza coupon, since Anna's the only one who can win. <laughs> Maybe we'll just give her one for being, for showing up. I think she's um, here. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. We'll probably just give you one for showing up, Anna. Thank you. Um, oh, I okay. appreciate that. <laughs> no, no problem. Uh, so we'll go, Sierra, if you can do one, do the February meeting minutes. I'll stop sharing. You can start. Okay. 
All right, can you see my screen? Yes. All right, so um, meeting minutes were posted to our new Groveton PTA website. And with that, um, during the February meeting, we had roll call, approval of the minutes, treasurer's and president's report. Um, we had a teacher funding request um, by gym teacher, Ms. Rodman, and then presentation by Ms. Casablanca for the FLE presentation. Um, George provided updates on the account balance and then changes that we were making to the budget to reflect um, lack of spending and reduced spending through the year. President's report went over um, recent uh, donations through Amazon Smile. And then uh, we went through and had a good discussion around the requests that Ms. Rodman had. The uh, PTA approved the request with no objections and she has already purchased five of the big wheels. However, one has gone MIA and so she needs to uh, address that. <laughs> and then uh, Ms. Casablanca went through the whole family life education presentation. I had updated the meeting minutes with all the various links so that folks could go through, identify uh, the material through Blackboard um, so they're informed when they decide yay or nay on um, enrolling their kids in FLE. And then Ms. Hart, um, I hope all of you, you were all there, um, did a phenomenal job um, organizing and orchestrating the Blizzard Bingo, which was a huge success and lots of winners and lots of big prizes. And those are the minutes. Everyone concur? Concur. Yes, concur. Excellent. Thank you. Thank you, Sierra. Okay, uh, next, George can do the treasurer's report. Yep, figuring out a share screen right now. <laughs> Always a challenge. Can you see it? Yes, thank you. All right, so as of this last weekend, or you know, yesterday, $29,183.14 in the Capital One account that does include uh, one Toppers fundraiser, 183.26. A uh, couple DC slices fundraisers, I think, were rolled together at 350. An Amazon Smile donation of 85 dollars, 24 cents. Uh, one expense against the Blizzard Bingo for the grand prize of the Nintendo Switch, and Miss Robin's grant for the Big Wheels at 39.750. It does include any outstanding Blizzard bingo expenses. That's for gift cards and other prizes. Um, any possible adjustments to Ms. Robbins grant if due to that shipping error or by the seller. So if she has, if she needs a little bit extra to cover a new purchase of the, to replace that one missing big wheels, we can cover that. And then there's $4 outstanding in dues to National State Fairfax PTAs and a very super tiny reimbursement to me for when I paid the Fairfax dues um, in last month. And we have 45 members total. Any questions? Nope. Thank you, George. You're welcome. Appreciate that. We'll probably have a little, I'd be sending, submitting a reimbursement for the rest of the prizes that I'm ordering or have ordered already. Um, and then we do, we possibly have another grant to give out. Um, Ms. Walker, I spoke to Ms. I, well, I emailed Ms. Walker um, and she didn't do the 2020, she had asked for a reimbursement in 2020 to take a course of speaks to learn Spanish, but she never took it because she didn't, she didn't get approval. She didn't know she had gotten approval on it. So she said she was gonna look into the course again. So that would be good. Um, okay, great. So now I will, um, we probably don't want to have too many, um, we don't have a lot of folks here, so I'll just share, um, we have the treasurer's report and the now the president's report. Um, I mean, you know, it's the same sort of thing. Um, we still have, we still need the volunteers, uh, you know, the vice president position is still open. We will have to start doing an election nomination, nominating committee. Uh, for the PTA board elections, which we have to hold. Um, I'm not sure. I, I think probably in May, if I remember correctly, but I'm not 100% sure, but we will get to those. Uh, so, um, okay. Well, then from there, we're going to have the summer camp presentations and I'll sort of go over 
We've got eight folks. We've got eight people coming in. We've got Lee Mount Vernon Sports Club, uh, Code Ninjas, uh, Life Champ Martial Arts, which is uh, in Hayfield, uh, the Hayfield Shopping Center, Huntley Meadows, uh, Summer Cove, which is a, one, a summer camp for middle school students. So I thought they were appropriate because they're fifth, because they take fifth and sixth graders. Uh, then we have the St. James. Then we have the American Family Center, which is in a, which is a karate dojo in the uh, Beacon Hill Mall near the Toppers. And then we have the Taxmont Nature Camp, which is off on um, Bell, 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 um, Bellevue Road. Sorry, I would know that. Um, so, okay, um, I'll give them a. I told the first one to come at about 7:20, and I don't think he's entered the room yet. So we'll we can pause for a minute. I was. I'll stop sharing and then, oops, there we go. Uh, I do see one, one of the, one of the folks is in the, the um, from Code Ninjas, but not the uh, Lee Mount Vernon. And we do have a few people. Uh, my wife's watching on Facebook Live. Thank you, Melanie. And she said that there are about eight people, I guess nine people now watching. So, uh, Zoom's. Somebody's saying Zoom says there's another meeting in progress and won't anyone in when using the link sent via email? Oh, I use the link on Facebook. Yeah, I use the link on Facebook too. Oh gosh, okay. Just a note about those nominating committee um, people. I've been, I've served on that several years in a row. Um, and we usually got together in February and March to discuss names and then presented the names in April at the April meeting because then they had to um, be confirmed and then uh, voted on before the June meeting. So that gave us extra time. It was not pushed off as late. So if you haven't formed a committee yet, I'm happy to serve again on the committee, but I don't know that I'm gonna nominate myself. <laughs> okay, thank you, Anna. Thank you, thank you for that information. Um, Unfortunately, one of the things we sort of lack a little bit of, and to be perfectly honest, is institutional knowledge here because uh, George is the longest tenured group in parent and your kids are second grade at the oldest, correct? Right. Yeah, second grade. Yeah, and Sierra and I both have first graders, so we don't have a lot of institutional knowledge here, unfortunately. So um, we did have somebody else join. Uh, Yoli, did I get that right? Hopefully. Yeah, that's right. Hi. Okay. Good evening. Thank you. Did you have trouble? I heard that somebody posted on Facebook that there was trouble with the link that was sent via email. Did you have any trouble or? Right. The Using the link in the email, it didn't work. So I used the one that was posted on Facebook. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Steve, I used the one in the link that the from the email that you sent. It, it took a couple of minutes, but it, it did go through eventually. So I don't know. That's odd. <laughs> that shouldn't, a couple minutes shouldn't happen unless you're on dial up, Mr. Swagger, which I well, don't no, know. It, and it, it did take about four minutes before. I, 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 yeah, so I don't know if that's. Huh. I'm to wonder myself, but. It's huh. Okay. Go through. Okay. I'm just sending a note to the folks in the waiting room. Um, so I don't know. Man. So Ms. Casablanca's email did not have the same meeting ID or passcode as the one you sent in the Facebook. Oh, okay. Ooh. Ooh, that's, I wonder if, I, okay. Well, it happens. I don't know. It does. I don't know at this point what, yeah. Hopefully um, we'll just post on Facebook that folks should use that link and hopefully. And if you send us the, um, the recorded link, we can send that out in our parent communication this week too. Okay. Yeah, thank you. I will do that. Um, I probably some operator error on my part. Um, Yeah, I used the link 
that you sent us this morning. Yeah. Um, okay, I'm going to try to copy. I'm going to try to copy and paste the link and see if I can get that. Um, get maybe more people to join the Zoom. Take out all the garbage. Pardon my line. Pardon me for one moment while I. Yeah, I don't know what the. Whoops. Sorry. Pardon me for one second while I try to. Um, Okay. Alrighty. Well, we don't have any more folks. I do see. We, I do see we have a few people on Facebook Live. So uh, we don't have our first. Um, our first first presenter was supposed to be David Kamara from Lee Mount Vernon Sports. So let me check my email, my PTA email, and make sure I don't have any um, messages from folks there. No, I don't. My personal email. I don't have. Okay. Oh, okay. I think we have. Oh, no, that's another one. Okay, so we have three folks in the waiting room. I'll see if we can get. Um, hopefully we can have um, the first one. If not, then I'll I'll jump around and I'll start with the code ninjas folks, the code ninjas folks. Um, maybe that's what I'll do is um, start with him since the Mount Lee Mount Vernon Rex folks aren't here yet quite yet. So um, all right, I'm going to admit Dave Ryan. He's from Code Ninjas, which is in Alexandria uh, on King Street. So let me do that. Hello, Dave. <laughs> I was on mute. Oh, hey, Dave. How are you? Hey, how's it going? Good. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. We've got a small group here of our okay. PTA parents, but we've got some on Facebook Live and we've got some recordings. We're going to record this and send it out to the membership. So apologies for the low number of folks. Um, you, I'm a little bit early on you, but our first, you were supposed to be second at 725, but our first presenter is running a little late, I think. So okay. if, you want to, if you want to go ahead and uh, take have the floor. Okay, great. Um, so I'm Dave Ryan. I own uh, Code Ninjas Falls Church and Alexandria, two locations here in Northern Virginia. There are uh, I think seven locations open in Northern Virginia, so it's it's a huge nationwide franchise. Um, if you're not familiar with Code Ninjas, um, they actually have centers open in Canada and the UK now as well. Um, I, th I think we're talking about summer camps, right? Correct. Right. Okay, good. Uh, so summer camps, were, this will be our third summer at Falls Church. We open in May of 2019. Um, and so, and, and our second summer coming up at Alexandria. So we're really looking forward to this summer, obviously coming towards the end of COVID um, and hoping to, you know, expand a little bit our capacity, but we did run summer camps last summer um, at reduced capacity and we're planning for reduced capacity now with COVID restrictions and everything. So 10 to 12 kids in the center is kind of what we're limited to at each center just for, you know, social distancing and, mass requirements and sanitization, all that kind of stuff. Um, so the way we build our camps, we build them in uh, half day blocks. So we have AM and PM blocks scheduled. Our normal daily schedule um, is eight to noon for the AM block and then one to five for the PM block. If you book both blocks, then you get a full day, right? Your kid gets to stay for lunch <laughs> and we're happy to have lunch with, with the kids. Um, so that's kind of how our, our camp schedules go and they're, they're built in full week schedules. We have a full schedule. Um, I do have a summer camp guide that I can share the link to if you guys would like. Um, let's see, I'll drop it in chat here real quick. And this has the schedules for both the centers. Um, and it, it does run through the daily schedule, kind of give you an idea of what we do during the blocks of time and then some other information. There's a link to the COVID guidelines that uh, we're using. And then a description of all the camps. Now we run different camps, different weeks at each center. So 
if you're looking at the schedule and your kids really love Roblox, but it doesn't line up for the right week, well, we're probably running it different weeks at the other center. So just check that out. And uh, the, 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 the thing with the AM and the PM camps as well, it gives us flexibility to, to put different camps together. So we might run a Minecraft camp in the morning and then a coding camp, more coding focused camp in the afternoon, like with Python or, or Scratch or JavaScript or something like that. So they can have fun playing Minecraft and building things in Minecraft and then also do, do some coding as well. So I try, I try not to put the Minecraft with the Roblox because then they're just you know, playing all day. And that's, you know, some kids like that, but, you know, parents want to, you know, have their kids learn some stuff too. So that's kind of what we're focused on. And um, I would point out that we are refreshing all of our camps this summer. So it's not the same Minecraft and Roblox camps you might see. We've, we've added some things and actually at the, the Code Ninjas corporate level, they have a vice president of education, Grant Smith, his education team has been working really hard to put together some of the camps and they actually had some of the centers um, submit camps that they had developed on their own as well. And they're obviously modifying and refining those to, to make them usable for the whole enterprise, if you will. And so there's a lot of new topics this year and we actually were running 12 different topics across the 10 weeks of summer this summer. Um, so we run some of them multiple because Minecraft obviously is really popular. So we'll run that like four times in the summer Roblox a few times. We're also doing 3D printing, uh, build, you know, do-it-yourself websites. Uh, we're doing a, a music coding club, build, build the Beat is what it's called. We're also adding in, I uh, wanted to highlight robotics bootcamp using Lego. Um, so if you're familiar with the first Lego league, we're using the same robotics kits they used in the first Lego leagues. Um, and we're going to run a summer camp with that. And uh, hopefully that'll that'll spur some interest and we could sponsor some teams in the fall for uh, first Lego League. So that's kind of the real reason why we're running that camp. We really want to get in the first Lego League and participate in that as well. Um, but that that'll be a great camp. And then there's a few more. And then we also we developed some camps for juniors this year. We ran uh, our juniors are age five, six, seven year olds. Um, so the younger kids, we ran uh, some juniors camps last summer that went really well. And uh, my center director at Falls Church actually helped develop one of the curriculums that we submitted to headquarters um, off of what she had built last summer. So uh, very excited for, for her and, and for Code Ninjas getting, uh, getting that material. Um, and then in the camp guide, we have both the schedules for Alexandria and Falls Church. So you can see how it breaks out, AMs, PMs, and the, the matrix of all the different choices of camps. And uh, I don't think we have published our virtual summer camp schedule, but we are going to plan on running virtual camps this summer as well, same as we did last summer. It'll be the same topics, um, not all of them. It'll be the ones that we can run virtually. There'll be some like, like the stop motion animation. Well, maybe we could run that virtually. We'll see. But there may be some that'll be more difficult to run virtually that we, we may not include. So it won't be the same schedules as the in-center camps. Um, so we'll see how that goes, but we should be publishing that virtual camp schedule soon. And I, I think that's really all I had for uh, the summer camps. Um, did you guys have any questions? No, thanks, Dave. I appreciate it. Sorry, I was on. I was speaking of being on mute. I was on mute too. Uh, I don't. I just want to put in a plug. Uh, my son Shane does Code Ninjas. He really loves it. Uh, and the person he's talking about, the center director, is that Cassidy. Cassidy at Falls Church. Yeah, she's just taken over our uh, doing our juniors programs virtually because uh, our previous awesome. person had to take off. Yeah. And she's yeah, awesome. She's Shane loves loves doing class with her. So she's everybody Dave's had do this has been great. And Cassidy's doing it right now. And she's amazing. So. Yep. And we got him moving up, I think they're doing scratch. They moved him up to scratch from scratch junior. So he's progressing past the junior level and, and we'll get him into white belt here pretty soon doing JavaScript. Great. That's great. Yeah, he, it's really great. I, I, I'm happy. That's why I'm happy Dave did this because I think Code Ninjas is great if your kid likes math and games and things like that. He's he Shane's really enjoying it. So thanks, Dave. Um, we'll I'll make sure that we put we send your information out to them to the parents and things and everything. So um, so if you want to, I appreciate you. If you want to stick around for the other presentations, that's great. If anybody anybody has any questions, uh, go ahead and ask Dave and. Hi, this is George. I had a couple of questions. What um, background skills do you think kids need? I'm thinking specifically like typing, but are there any other, you know, 
prerequisites, so to speak? Um, most of the camps we gear for uh, kids that don't have a lot of experience. Um, I, I know the Python camp tends to be a little more difficult. So if they have some coding experience, it's, it's better because the scripting can get a little challenging. Um, and then obviously the JavaScript is, is the same. If they're not familiar with keyboards and where to find keys, it can be frustrating for kids. Uh, it, you know, when they start doing the, the real, you know, typing and scripting and coding. Um, so, so, you know, our camps are designed for kids age seven to 14, but some of those, I would say, if, if the kids aren't familiar with keyboard yet, you know, let them wait, do some of the other camps like Minecraft, Roblox, uh, you know, there's Meow Bits is great. Um, we're doing Make Code as well, which is an awesome platform um, that actually uses block coding and JavaScript. So, we could do it either way. Um, yeah. So yeah. Okay, thanks. If that answered your question, right? <laughs> yeah. I mean, I basically, I've kept my kid off the computer for a lot of his younger life out of fear of him, you know, getting absorbed so much into the online world. And as a result of this virtual schooling, I quickly realized that he's, you know, going to be out of my control soon. So uh, I would like to steer him in the right direction. He still doesn't have the basic typing skills and relies right. mostly on his mouse and Google voice search right we'll get him typing <laughs> he's gonna need to learn how to type and then he's when he's ready for gaming we just started the first uh, youth esports league in uh, northern virginia so check out xp league but that's that's down the road for you he's not doing Fortnite yet <laughs> great yeah, i myself code all the time python so oh cool cool yeah awesome Great. Well, thanks, Dave. Appreciate it. Um, yeah. Next, we're going to appreciate um, if anybody has any more questions, you can send me an email. I can forward that along to Dave and put you in touch if if you want to. Um, right now, I'm going to let in uh, Master Kim from Life Champ Martial Arts. So <clears throat> hello, Master Kim. Oh, you're on mute, Miss Master Kim. I'm sorry, can you hear me? Yes, hi, how are you? Thanks for joining us, we appreciate it. Uh, not a problem. Um, today, Master Kim is in the class right now. So my, my name is Jason E. I am the president and the, uh, the chief master instructor of our organizations. So then um, I'm happy to be here. Thank you for joining us. Go sure. right ahead and tell us about your summer camps. Okay, the Live Gym Martial Arts, our summer camp, we are currently offering a um, six locations in Prince William and Fairfax County. One of the locations we're located in um, Hayfield Shopping Center, which is Hayfield and Telegraph Road. And this is the full day camp. The kids can um, can be dropped off as early as a seven o'clock in the morning, and um, but they can pick up uh, as late as a six thirty in the evening. So basically, our live gym martial arts summer camp is as a focusing on children's uh, the, the martial arts training. On top of that, it's one of the most important things that we're trying to provide is that through this martial arts training, kids can learn all of those great, you know, life skill lessons, you know, developing their, you know, confidence, and discipline, and the respect. And these are the one of the very important benefits that they can get out of it. But at the same time, our uh, the summer camp, we have a, a lots of different fun activities like a field trip, going to the swimming pool, and um, we have a, a each week we have a different themed uh, the camp. So then well, we have a um, very active the summer camp. We've been doing this for about 22 years in here in Northern Virginia. So um, the, we're promoting this as summer camp. Now we're back based on those guidelines. We'll be able to do a very safe summer camp and um, um, activities for kids and their families. And also um, for, um, I, I believe the master Kim went to the schools and the, one of the benefit about doing this activities for the local uh, public school is that um, um, any child who register our summer camp and uh, part of the registration fee, we directly donated to the public schools as well. And that's for the summer camp, but also we have a regular martial arts training so that this is what we have been doing it for um, many years especially in the Prince William County, 
we've been doing this for many years and we're um, official partner of, uh, with the, the, the Prince William County Public Schools. We've been donating about like more than $100,000 for past about 15 years. So this is something that I would like to uh, do it with the local schools in special in here, um, uh, the Kingstown area. So Groveton Elementary School is one of the perfect schools that we'll be able to work with. Well, thank you. Appreciate, appreciate it. Um, I'm glad Master, I'm sorry that this interrupted Master Kim's class, but I'm glad you were able to jump in and take his place. Yes, yes, sir. So, thank you very much. <laughs> if you want to pass along his thanks, and if there's any information that you want to pass along to our families, um, I'll get in touch with him and he can pass that along to me. And I'll, if anybody has any questions, we can send that out to them. Yes, absolutely. We'll be able to um, send you some, um, um, if you need a digital form of the brochures or anything, we'll be able to provide you at the same time. We we'll also, uh, like I said earlier, we're working with the local public schools and we do a, a lot of um, fundraising activities. So one of the perfect things for your school uh, is that any of the students joining our martial arts program, we are donating a, um, the registration fee to uh, directly to the school. That's one of the things that we'll be able to do. Oh, that's wonderful. Thank you so much. We appreciate it. No Does problem. anybody have any questions? I have a quick question. Um, what ages do you support for uh, summer camps? Uh, our summer camp is a kindergarten to um, uh, basically elementary school, kindergarten to elementary school. Yes. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Um, you're welcome to stay on if you want. Um, if you if you have to go, we understand. And I'm going to invite in the next person uh, who's Kylie Starzik. I um, hope I got that right from Huntley Meadows. So thank you very much, sir. Appreciate it. Okay, you're welcome. Okay. Have a nice day. Thank you for having me. Yes. Hi, Carly. Kylie. Sorry. Hello. Hi, thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Oh, sure. Thanks for having me. Okay. Uh, this is, I'm, if you want to pronounce, I, not sure I get your last name correct, um, but yeah, uh, this is Kylie. She's from Huntley Meadows. Um, so go ahead and give us, let us know about your summer camps. Thank you. Sure. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Kylie Stark. I'm the program director at Huntley Meadows Park, which is your neighborhood park, probably about maybe less than a mile south from Groveton Elementary School. Um, we offer a wide range of natural history and cultural history programs year round, everything from virtual field trips to in person field trips and family programs, scout programs as well. Um, and then, of course, in the summer, we're offering a variety of um, in person nature camps and in person history camps, as well as virtual nature and history camps. Um, we've got two different locations at Huntley Meadows Park. Um, that we'll be hosting camps out of each week through summer. And that will be at the visitor center entrance and at the historic Huntley site. So each week, um, each camp is going to have kind of its own bubble or cohort. So we're keeping groups small to about a maximum of 10 kids. There's going to be at least two adults chaperoning the uh, field trips, or I'm sorry, the summer camps. Um, we have our summer camp times are either 9 a.m. to 12 p.m. or 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. And they range for ages, uh, children age 6 to 12 years old. Um, our most popular camps probably include our Native American Survival Skills Camp. We have um, Zoology Animal Fun for Kids Camp. We also have a new history camp called Mystery Spy Camp as well. So all of our camps are um, they're really dynamic they always include they're going to be completely outdoors and they have a really strong educational component along with fun too so um yeah it's um we're looking forward to a great summer we were all prepped for summer 2020 of course those got canceled um, but we've got all of our plans uh, moving forward and we're looking forward to a great summer camp season Great. Well, thank you for that. Um, does anybody have any questions for Kylie? I have a question. Um, last year it was um, mostly through the park tech system to enroll in Huntley Meadows camps. Is it still the same system? That's right. Yes. Yeah. So you'll have to have a park takes account uh, to enroll in summer camps in any program within the Fairfax County Park Authority system. Hi. What happens when it rains? Do, 
the kids get wet, hopefully. They just stay outside and get soaking wet. Yeah, I mean, we're nature camp. So each camp is based out of the shelter. So there is a covered space. Um, if there's really dangerous weather, like thunder, lightning, tornado warning, we do have a space designated inside where kids can um, retreat from the weather safely, stay six feet apart um, until the weather passes. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, we tell kids and parents to come prepared, rain boots, rain jackets. Um, and yeah, we'll still go hiking in the rain, so. <laughs> Great. Well, thank you so much. Um, and if you want to, if you have any information like a brochure, digital brochure or something like that, let, feel free to pass that along and we can distribute it to other parents. We do have, well, we have a few people here. We have some more folks on Facebook Live and we're going to post this um, in other places as well. So, hope, so folks will get your materials. Great. So, okay. Yeah, I'll send that right to you. Thank you so much. We really pr appreciate you doing this. Um, so uh, next we're going to speak to uh, Ms. Megan Rose. Uh, she's from Summer Cove. Uh, so I'm gonna let her in. Hello, Megan. Oh. Hello, Megan. Hi. hi, yes, hi. Hi, um, this is Megan. Um, just to let you know, she is taking, this is her anniversary as she told, she told me via email. So uh, let's keep it brief for Megan so she can get back to her spouse who's probably may or may oh, not. You're so her. sweet. No, he is totally fine. He almost bought a, a, a van today. So uh, he, he can, he can wait a little bit. Um, but yes, I'm Megan. I uh, own and run uh, Summer Cove Summer Camp, which is, um, we've been running since 2016, which is when I actually opened it. And um, we cater specifically to middle school students. So rising sixth through ninth grade students. Um, and the reason that um, we particularly focus on this age is that um, as parents, I'm sure if you've done some like looking around the area, most of them are specifically, um, you know, they get lumped in with the younger kids or they get lumped in with the older kids and they don't really quite fit into either age group. Um, so this is a camp that is specifically just for this age range. Um, and we do rising sixth because um, a lot of Prince William County schools, um, actually the, the school that I teach at, uh, the middle school, it starts at sixth grade. Um, and so we um, have kind of a wide variety of in-person camps uh, this year. We also are offering some virtual camps. We did all virtual last year and it went off really well um, considering uh, everything that was happening. Um, so we did, um, we did uh, wanna make sure that we continued that this summer, just because I know that there are a lot of parents who are still not quite sure about sending their kids back in person. So we do have virtual camps as well. Um, those are gonna be more of our like baking and cooking um, and art based camps. Um, but we have uh, kind of three categories that we focus in. We have high energy camps. So those are gonna be like Survivor, Harry Potter, The Amazing Race. Um, our most popular one is How to Survive a Zombie Apocalypse. Like that one, without fail, always books up really quickly. Um, so that's our first category. We have creative based camps. So those are, again, a lot of our baking, cooking, art, um, fashion, things like that. And then our last one is our tech camps. So we do offer one technology based camp uh, each week. So film uh, making, photography, um, we do an uh, animation camp, a digital art and design camp. Um, this year we're trying to um, see if we can uh, have some more STEM based camps as well. So um, we're looking into uh, making sure that we can provide a lot of um, STEM, STEM camps this, uh, this summer as well. So that's us in a nutshell. We are right off of Braddock um, in the like Burke Springfield area. Um, so a lot of people like it because it's right, you can jump right on to Braddock and then jump on to 495. So it's perfect for a commute. Um, and we do also offer aftercare as well. So um, if you needed to, your kids could stay a little bit later um, and that way um, you don't have to rush back to, to get them. So um, I'm happy to answer any questions too. And sorry, I'm out of breath. I am like recently diagnosed with asthma. So uh, I'm getting used to it. Well, thank you very much. Um, I, I have a, I, I have a, do you have an amazing race camp for adults? <laughs> um, that sounds I, cool. <laughs> I don't, but we, a lot of our parents, um, once their kids are like done for the week, um, or even in the middle of the week, they're like, 
this is so much fun. Like, I wish that I could come to, especially our like Harry Potter camps. The, the, we get a lot of people who are like, I wish there was an adult Harry Potter camp. And I was like, me too, friend, me too. <laughs> yeah, but that one, our, our high energy camps are definitely the ones that um, a lot of people sign up for. Okay, great. Well, thank you for doing this. Um, yeah, of course. You know, we have fifth and sixth graders at, um, at Grove Tin. So, you know, and eventually my kid, eventually the rest of us will have fifth and sixth graders. So oh, thank you for taking time out of a very important day in your life. And we appreciate it. I appreciate it too. You guys have a good rest of your night. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Uh, so next we've got Donovan Chu. Donovan uh, works at the St. James. Hey, Donovan, how you doing? Good, good. I'm here. Thanks. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Uh, go ahead. We can't see you. I don't know if you have your, your, I was going to say, do you need me to, um, I can, you open can it. if you want. There that's we go. Up, that's up to you. <laughs> so great. Well, why don't you fill us in on the St. the camps at the St. James? Cool. So, um, of course we're going to do things a little differently than normal, um, this year at the St. James. Uh, we actually did host camps last summer. Um, in August, in the month of August, uh, we actually had to shut down in June and July because we weren't um, comfortable enough with doing so. Um, it was just, you know, such a quick turnaround. But this year we're going to essentially uh, host kind of what we did in August um, with a little bit more structure this year. Um, so this year we're going to start camps in June and run them through July, I mean, and August. So we're going to do a 12-week program. Um, our camps do run on a week by week basis. So you do get to sign up um, per week. You don't essentially have to sign up for the entire summer. Um, so that's a plus with our camps. Of course, uh, with our COVID protocols, that's, you know, number one topic, um, safety. Uh, one thing that we're gonna do is, you know, try and keep our capacities down. We do have a large facility, 450,000 square feet, um, as many of you may not know, uh, but we have venues for every type of camp um, from hockey to soccer, uh, lacrosse, basketball, volleyball. And then we have our ultimate sports camp, which is a camp that's uh, good for your kid who just wants to have fun, who doesn't want to stick to one specific sport. Um, they can come and test out a lot of new sports um, that they've never tried before. That's our most popular camp, uh, which is the ultimate sports camp. Uh, kids do anything from if you know if they play basketball they'll do things like knockout um, they'll do mini games they get to participate in yoga um, and then we have all of these extra amenities um, that hopefully will be open um, going into the summer we haven't made uh, full decisions on uh, opening up a lot of our amenities like the water park yet um, just due to safety precautions uh, our pool will be open uh, the rock wall, that's one thing um, that we're still kind of trying to test out and see if we want to um, open that, but that's another amenity. Our Super Awesome Amazing Center, we have a, a camp specifically for that area, which is called the Adventure and Gaming Camp. Uh, that camp includes virtual reality gaming, uh, trampoline park, Nerf Battle Zone. Um, then we have eSports computers where kids play different games like Roblox, Minecraft, um, age appropriate games and things like that um so yeah that's pretty much our overview of camps um if you guys want more information of course uh we have a full website i don't know if you know people have been sharing screens or uh adding links or anything like that um you can feel free to add a link in the chat and um send the send some information if you have a digital brochure along and i'll get it out to folks um just one thing i been to i'm a member of the saint james it's a great yes. place if anybody ever has a need to you want to check it out before maybe they think about joining let me know and i'll be happy to bring yep. you in as a guest for sure so we are actually um we're a, a, a public slash private facility uh we are a, a member facility uh you know we give our premier access to our members but you know as guests you could just come walk in um you could take a tour you can see what our facility is all about um you can schedule a tour with one of our sales ambassadors and they can specifically walk you through our camp program. Um, I was actually the summer camp director for the past two years. Um, I've since then <laughs> been promoted, but we do have another camp director now who's actually was my assistant for the 
past two years. His name is Terrell. Um, so he'll also be around if you guys have any specific questions. Both of our information is on the website. I'm going to drop our web page in the link in the in the chat. Um, and yeah, so uh, if anybody, you know, I know Steve Stephen did mention there would be a Q&A and I'll be on to uh, take any questions after. Um, but yeah, that's our little spill of the St. James uh, located right in Springfield, Virginia. So I have one. Donovan, thank you. Oh, sorry, somebody has a question. Yeah, uh, yeah. What ages are, are the camps at St. James? Yes, ages 6 to 15. So one thing that I did forget to mention, we are a licensed summer camp now. Um, so that's a plus. We are hosting for ages 6 to 15. We're licensed by the state of Virginia as a child day center. Um, so that's the age range that uh, we're licensed to hold. So 6 to 15. Um, and many of the different sports camps vary. Um, but like I said, our ultimate sports camps varies for all ages. We have full day and half day camps before and after care. Uh, we currently are offering transportation, um, but that may change. Um, right now it is a feature, but that, that it may change. But we do offer before and after care. Our camps run nine to four. Um, before care starts at 7.30. So you have from 7.30 to 8.30. And then our after care goes from 4.30 to 6 p.m. So our camps essentially run from nine to 3.30, then we have a little cool down from 3.30 to 4, and then pickup is just between that 3.30 and 4.30. Um, so those are additional features. Lunch is also a thing that we offer um, at an additional cost of $12 a day. Um, but we have anywhere from pizza to, we have healthy options, vegetarian options, everything is peanut free, uh, chicken tenders, we do chicken Caesar wraps, um, things like that. Yeah. Great. Thanks, Donovan. Appreciate it. Congratulations on your promotion. I pre and I appreciate you doing this. I reached out to Donovan because he was the camp director for the last few <laughs> years, and I just kind of assumed he still was. So yeah, no, I realized he had gotten promoted. <laughs> no problem. Like I said, I'm still in the loop. Um, I'm still, you know, with Terrell along the way. So uh, I'm still, you know, people still come to me for questions. Like I said, I was the face of camp for those two years, and I'll still be around. So. Great. Yeah, well, I'll stick on for. Yeah. Thanks a bunch. Yeah, no problem. I'll stick on. Okay, cool. Uh, next, we're gonna let in David Camara. He's with the Lee Mount Vernon Sports Club. Um, so I'm gonna let him in. And actually, real quick, Donovan, do you want to share the link in the chat? I didn't see it. Yep, I sure did forget. Yep, I'm gonna send it out. Hi, David. How are you? Up oh, your your phone's on. You are mute. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Hi, everybody. Thank you so much, Steve. I'm, I apologize. I had an emergency uh, registration minute that I missed. So thank you all for having me over. No need to apologize. You made it just, you're just in time. No worries. Thank you so much, Steve. Thank you. Hi, everybody. Thank you. So, uh, yes, really quickly, I'm uh, the, the, the director of um, youth program development at Lima Vernon Sports Club. And um, I'm so excited to uh, to have this opportunity, and I thank all of you for for being here and listening. So we ru we are running uh, summer camps. I mean, spring break camp on the week of uh, March 29th to uh, Thursday, April 1st, and uh, our summer camps will be uh, July the week of July 12, the week of July 26, and uh, the week of August 2nd. So. Uh, we have Coach Sam, who is an amazing um, coach, Coach of Virginia Tech, who is working at Lima Vernon, and he also took the uh, the, the 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 women national team of Nigeria to the World Cup. He's uh, so patient and so caring about teaching the game of uh, the beautiful game of soccer. And again, Steve, thank you so much for inviting me, and uh, thanks to all of you. That's that's all. I have to say. Thank okay. you so much. Well, thank you, it's David. Um, and if you guys have any materials you want to pass along, um, you can send a link in the chat. And if you or if you want to send it to me, and I can forward it along to folks who are interested. And just to let you know, we've got more people watching on Facebook Live, and we'll have this on our web page and everything. So hopefully, some folks come and join you. I'll be hopefully I run into you. My son's going to play uh, soccer this this again on this spring. Okay. So. I look forward to meeting your son. Thank Great. you so much. Steve. No, thank you. Thanks Appreciate so it. 
Uh, does anybody have any questions for David? Okay. Uh, I'm good. We got more and more. And then if anybody has any questions afterwards, if you want to stick around, David, that's great. If not, if you've got to go, we understand completely. Um, so next we've got Lisa Finn from Taximont Nature Camp. Uh, hello, Lisa. Well, oh. Hi, Lisa, you're on mute. Oh, there we go. Um, okay, so um, here's my little spiel. Uh, we're a, 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 it's a, a camp that is geared toward three and a half year olds to seven year olds. Um, and we are located on uh, at Toximont Preschool. It's uh, um, on Fort Hunt Road. Um, it's they call it the little school in the woods and it is very much in the woods and we have always had lots of activities outside um, and just coming in for small like snack or whatever but now we're going to have everything's going to be outside and um, we're following CDC guidelines um, and trying to make it as safe as possible and actually the preschool has been going on in person all outside since the fall so um, the teachers there kind of know what they're doing. Um, but we have a morning camp and an afternoon camp. Um, and, and the, um, uh, we have themes like beach week, um, farm week, um, what else? Um, mountain week. Um, so it goes on for five weeks. Two of the weeks have a morning afternoon session, a morning and afternoon session. And we also have on our little little place in the woods, we have chickens. We're gonna have kittens that you can take home for a night as a little sleepover. We have um, bunnies, guinea pigs, birds. You know, we, we have lots of animals um, and it's a really fun camp for, for kids. And we also have teenage uh, counselors that come in and help us out. So um, any questions about anything? No, thank. I was just going to mention, if anybody has older kids, they do have counsel. They do have the counselors. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure what the age of them are, but they're mostly teenagers. Is that it? Yes. Yeah, the teenagers have to be um, at least going into seventh grade and um, up through up through high school. And so we've had kids who were campers from you know three and a half years old up to seven, and then they have to wait a little bit, and then they they become counselors because um, they love. They love the camp so much. <laughs> so. That's great. And Shane's done Taximont camp and he went to Taximont preschool and it's a great place. So I can attest to that. So thank you for coming by, Lisa. Does anybody have any questions for her? I have a question. Um, sorry, what were the hours and date range for the camps? Okay, so the, so the camp starts um, June 7th and it runs through five weeks of that. And the, um, the hours are in the morning session is 9 to 11.45. And then uh, two o'clock to three forty-five for the afternoon camp. So, so and with those hours, um, is there option to do both? And so, is there continuity between? There is not. So you can do both, but you do have to pick up your camper, feed them lunch, and then bring them back. Great, thanks. Thank you, Lisa. Um, and if you have any, I, I I can send along the material, the the link to the website. But if you have anything you wanna, in addition to you wanna send along, just let me know, and I'll pass it along to folks. So. Thank you. Thank you thank for you. letting me come on. Good luck no, with everything. I know it's been. No, a, thank you. Thank you. It was kind of a little last minute, but I'm glad you were able to do it. So, um, and so last, we do have one more person. Um, we have Master Kim from the. Um, American from the American Family Center. Um, I'm going to let him in right now. So oh, he just dropped off. Oh, darn. Okay. Um, well, hopefully he joins. Hopefully he joins back with us. Um, I know he had just called me actually, and I couldn't pick up. So um, hope we'll give him another minute. Does anybody have any questions? I know Donovan from the St. James and David from Lee Mount Vernon are still on if anybody has any questions. And David just put some information in the chat for us. Um, did you want to, anything else you want to pass along, David? No, I just, uh, 
just wanted to say thanks, but uh, we're definitely uh, looking for um, welcome children between the ages of eight and 15. And we're really COVID conscious. And we offer pizza, we serve pizza on the last day of camp. It's a lot of fun. And um, yes, that's it. Thank you to all. Thank hey, you very hey much. David, I had a quick question. Um, yes. What, where, is, I missed it when you were talking before, where is the, your camps, where are they primarily located? Yes, the camp will be located um, uh, on, of Bueller, uh, the Manchester Lakes. We have, it's a beautiful grass field that we use for our, for our camps for spring and summer. And, and uh, it's from, uh, half day camps are uh, from nine to 12. And um, we do offer, we will be probably offering full day camps for the older children, nine to three during the summer. And um, yeah, Manchester Lakes. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Kristen. Thank you, David. Appreciate it. Um, you, does anybody else have any quest other questions for David or Donovan? And if you if you do, if you think of something later, um, I feel free to drop me an email to um, my it's the Groveton PTA president at gmail.com. And I'll make sure I forward it along to the right camp folks that you if you have any questions and I'll connect the two of you up so you don't have to keep emailing me. So if anybody has questions for Donovan, David or any of the other presenters, uh, feel free. We'll we'll connect you. So thanks a lot for joining us. I, uh, David and Donovan, I appreciate it. Um, I think unless, if anybody doesn't have any questions, does anybody have any questions uh, PTA wise? Um, hopefully, uh, I was going to give Master Kim another moment or two in case he wanted to jump in. Um, if he if he jumps back in on the Zoom, but does anybody have any questions? Um, I guess we can do a, we can do the drawing for one of the for the pizza coupons, Sierra. We've got a couple of members here, so. Might as well let them benefit from that. So, how many drawings do we have? Two, we usually do two, so we'll do two. I mean, all right. Well, the first can one. I uh, can I give you a couple qu couple quick reminders? Oh sure. So, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Swagger. Yeah, go right ahead. Hey, uh, so I just want to remind everybody that next Friday is a two hour early release. It's the last day of the quarter, so that's the twenty sixth, um, and then we are on spring break from um, that Monday through the following Monday and students return uh, back to school on April 6th. So I know that seems weird <laughs> having just started, but I uh, um, wanna make sure that everybody's aware that next Friday is a two hour early release and then we are on spring break. Great, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Swagger. Okay, sorry, sorry about that. Um, appreciate you reminding all of us of those dates. Okay, do we have some win? All right, so I was saying the winners are Anna Bennett and Yoli Soller. Mute. Okay, congratulations, Anna and Yoli. I'll be in touch. I've got to get in touch with a lot some of the other winners from previous months as well to get it from that, get them the pizza coupons. But um, you'll be getting a Topper's pizza coupon. So thank you for for joining us tonight. Um, if anybody has any, like I said, if anybody has any other, does anybody have any other questions? David's still here. If you have a question for him, or uh, we can pass other questions along to the other summer camp folks. Thanks. Thank you, David, and everybody for joining us uh, tonight. If we don't have any questions, we'll just adjourn the meeting. Thank you so much, Stephen. Thanks to everyone. Thank you. Thanks. Such an honor to be here with you, all, all of you. Thank you. Uh, okay. Well, everybody, have a good night. Thanks for thanks for joining. I think it's time for me to put my son to bed. So good night. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, Steve. If you send the link to uh, to the recorded meeting to Miss Casablanca, we'll get it in the newsletter tomorrow. Okay, and I will post it on YouTube as well. It takes a little bit of time, the meeting to um, to um, process and be posted. So it might, I'll see if I can get it to you tomorrow. Oh, okay. If And if not, we'll send another one next week. So that's fine. Okay, yeah, it, it, it's just, I, it takes a long time for it to download to my computer. So, um, but we'll get, it to, we'll get it to you eventually. All right, thanks. Have a good evening. Thank you, you too, Mr. Swagger. Tell Shane, I hope he feels better. <laughs> no, thank you.